Claire. That yeah, story will certainly be all over tomorrow. Corey, thank you. Also new at 4 this afternoon, the police chief confirming to News 4 today they have applied for warrants in the case of the Central West End couple who pointed guns at protesters on their street. News 4 investigative reporter Lauren Traeger live for us this afternoon in the Central West End. Well, Claire, we are here back at the gates of this private street in that incident that has literally garnered international headlines all around the world. The St. Louis couple that lives here in this mansion now at the center of controversy. And this afternoon, we did learn that the St. Louis police have applied for warrants in the case, though we don't know who those warrants are for or what charges they might potentially be. Take a listen to what the police chief had to say. The hostility is what I noticed. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to see I don't want to see guns out when people are very hostile and angry at each other. And so those are those are recipes for violence. And so again, we we, we applied on the warrant. Uh, there was there were uh, there's been follow up information, and we are awaiting what the what the decision on the warrant application. Now you might remember this all happened Sunday, June 28th, as a large group of people were headed to a protest calling for St. Louis Mayor Lyda Cruson to resign. In the picture seen by many people now, Patricia and Mark McCloskey pointing guns at people after a search warrant was executed at their home. Both of those guns now in the custody of police. But their defense attorney, Joel Schwartz, has previously maintained they are absolutely innocent of any crime. He says they were acting within their full rights to protect themselves and their property. The street is private, and he says the protesters were trespassing and were threatening to the McCloskeys. I reached out to Joel Schwartz this afternoon, who said he had no comment comment at this time. Again, just to highlight this, the chief says they are waiting to hear back from the prosecutor's office. We've reached out numerous times to circuit attorney Kim Gardner's office and just within the last hour or so we did hear back. They would say only that the case is still under investigation. So certainly a lot more could come on this and we'll keep digging for details. Claire Lauren, before we let you go this afternoon, any talk today? Have you heard anything at all today about what potential charges could be considered in this? Well, Claire, that is certainly a question that a lot of legal experts and attorneys that I've talked to are certainly weighing and very interested in seeing. Again, just because police apply for warrants doesn't mean that any charges will be issued. Prosecutors could always refuse to issue any charges, but some of the cases that they could be looking at here, some of the statutes could include flourishing, a flourishing a weapon or exhibiting a weapon, as you might say. But again, the details are really the devil's in the details, so to speak, because it could come down to whether or not uh, any of the weapons were defaced or modified, whether or not they were readily capable of firing. Those are certainly important questions. And again, a lot of people are looking at whether or not there would be a legitimate self-defense claim here, including the castle doctrine. So a lot of legal issues, certainly an interesting issue, and we'll keep following it, Claire. All right, our Lauren Traeger reporting live for us this afternoon.